Root of Administration, Wikipedia Article Audio A root of administration in pharmacology and toxicology is the path by which a drug, fluid, poison, or other substance is taken into the body. Routes of administration are generally classified by the location at which the substance is applied. Common examples include oral and intravenous administration. Routes can also be classified based on where the target of action is. Action may be topical, enteral, or parenteral. Classification By application location Enteral-slash-gastrointestinal Parenteral Topical Choice of roots Convenience Desired target effect Oral Local Inhalation Parenteral 2 Research Routes of administration are usually classified by application location. The route or course the active substance takes from application location to the location where it has its target effect is usually rather a matter of pharmacokinetics. Exceptions include the transdermal or transmucosal routes, which are still commonly referred to as routes of administration. The location of the target effect of active substances are usually rather a matter of pharmacodynamics. An exception is topical administration, which generally means that both the application location and the effect thereof is local. Topical administration is sometimes defined as both a local application location and local pharmacodynamic effect and sometimes merely as a local application location regardless of location of the effects. Administration through the gastrointestinal tract is sometimes termed enteral or enteric administration. Enteral-slash-enteric administration usually includes oral and rectal administration, in the sense that these are taken up by the intestines. However, Uptake of drugs administered orally may also occur already in the stomach, and as such gastrointestinal may be a more fitting term for this route of administration. Furthermore, some application locations often classified as enteral, such as sublingual and sublabial or buccal, are taken up in the proximal part of the gastrointestinal tract without reaching the intestines. Strictly enteral administration can be used for systemic administration, as well as local, such as in a contrast enema, where by contrast media is infused into the intestines for imaging. However, for the purposes of classification based on location of effects, the term enteral is reserved for substances with systemic effects. Many drugs as tablets, capsules, or drops are taken orally. Administration methods directly into the stomach include those by gastric feeding tube or gastrostomy. Substances may also be placed into the small intestines, as with a duodenal feeding tube and enteral nutrition. Enteric coated tablets are designed to dissolve in the intestine, not the stomach because the drug present in the tablet causes irritation in the stomach. The rectal route is an effective route of administration for many medications, especially those used at the end of life. The walls of the rectum absorb many medications quickly and effectively. Medications delivered to the distal one-third of the rectum at least partially avoid the first pass effect through the liver which allows for greater bioavailability of many medications than that of the oral route. Rectal mucosa is highly vascularized tissue that allows for rapid and effective absorption of medications. A suppository is a solid dosage form that fits for rectal administration. In hospice care, a specialized rectal catheter, 
designed to provide comfortable and discreet administration of ongoing medications provides a practical way to deliver and retain liquid formulations in the distal rectum, giving health practitioners a way to leverage the established benefits of rectal administration. The parenteral root is any root that is not enteral. Parenteral administration can be performed by injection, that is, using a needle and a syringe, or by the insertion of an indwelling catheter. Locations of application of parenteral administration include The definition of the topical route of administration sometimes states that both the application location and the pharmacodynamic effect thereof is local. In other cases, Topical is defined as applied to a localized area of the body or to the surface of a body part regardless of the location of the effect. By this definition, topical administration also includes transdermal application, where the substance is administered onto the skin but is absorbed into the body to attain systemic distribution. If defined strictly as having local effect, the topical route of administration can also include enteral administration of medications that are poorly absorbable by the gastrointestinal tract. One poorly absorbable antibiotic is vancomycin, which is recommended by mouth as a treatment for severe Clostridium difficile colitis. The reason for choice of routes of drug administration are governing by various factors. In acute situations, in emergency medicine and intensive care medicine, drugs are most often given intravenously. This is the most reliable route, as in acutely ill patients the absorption of substances from the tissues and from the digestive tract can often be unpredictable due to altered blood flow or bowel motility. Enteral routes are generally the most convenient for the patient, as no punctures or sterile procedures are necessary. Enteral medications are therefore often preferred in the treatment of chronic disease. However, some drugs cannot be used enterally because their absorption in the digestive tract is low or unpredictable. Transdermal administration is a comfortable alternative, there are, however, only a few drug preparations that are suitable for transdermal administration. Identical drugs can produce different results depending on the route of administration. For example, some drugs are not significantly absorbed into the bloodstream from the gastrointestinal tract and their action after enteral administration is therefore different from that after parenteral administration. This can be illustrated by the action of naloxone, an antagonist of opiates such as morphine. Naloxone counteracts opiate action in the central nervous system when given intravenously and is therefore used in the treatment of opiate overdose. The same drug, when swallowed, acts exclusively on the bowels. It is here used to treat constipation under opiate pain therapy and does not affect the pain-reducing effect of the opiate. The oral route is generally the most convenient and costs the least. However, some drugs can cause gastrointestinal tract irritation. For drugs that come in delayed release or time-release formulations, Breaking the tablets or capsules can lead to more rapid delivery of the drug than intended. By delivering drugs almost directly to the site of action, the risk of systemic side effects is reduced. However, skin irritation may result, and for some forms such as creams or lotions, the dosage is difficult to control. Inhaled medications can be absorbed quickly and act both locally and systemically. Proper technique with inhaler devices is necessary to achieve the correct dose. Some medications can have an unpleasant taste or irritate the mouth. Inhalation by smoking a substance is likely the most rapid way to deliver drugs to the brain as the substance travels directly to the brain without being diluted in the systemic circulation. 
the severity of dependence on psychoactive drugs tends to increase with more rapid drug delivery. The term injection encompasses intravenous, intramuscular, subcutaneous, and intradermal administration. Parenteral administration generally acts more rapidly than topical or enteral administration, with onset of action often occurring in 15-30 seconds for 4, 10-20 minutes for IM and 15-30 minutes for SC. They also have essentially 100% bioavailability and can be used for drugs that are poorly absorbed or ineffective when they are given orally. Some medications, such as certain antipsychotics, can be administered as long-acting intramuscular injections. Ongoing four infusions can be used to deliver continuous medication or fluids. Disadvantages of injections include potential pain or discomfort for the patient and the requirement of trained staff using aseptic techniques for administration. However, in some cases, patients are taught to self-inject, such as SC injection of insulin in patients with insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus. As the drug is delivered to the site of action extremely rapidly with four injection, there is a risk of overdose if the dose has been calculated incorrectly, and there is an increased risk of side effects if the drug is administered too rapidly. Neural drug delivery is the next step beyond the basic addition of growth factors to nerve guidance conduits. Drug delivery systems allow the rate of growth factor release to be regulated over time which is critical for creating an environment more closely representative of in vivo development environments. Central Nervous System Physical and Chemical Properties of the Drug The physical properties are solid, liquid and gas. The chemical properties are solubility, stability, pH, irritancy etc., site of desired action, the action may be localized and approachable or generalized and not approachable, rate of extent of absorption of the drug from different routes, effect of digestive juices and the first phase of metabolism, condition of the patient.